Hello, my name is Tina. In this video I will talk about new desktop laser engraver, Ortho Laser Master 15W version. Let's start with unboxing. You can see that the box is completely undamaged and the only sticker on the box said that it came from Netherlands. So there's no tax because zero priority line shipping method. Packaging is amazing, almost no way to damage something during transport. Here you got manual and every component on its place additionally protected with plastic bag. Here we got main Y axis, X axis, USB cable, laser module, power supply, glasses and the back with accessories. Here we got some references how to set up laser for cutting or engraving, parts list and short but really clear English manual. Laser module is really big and heavy if I compare with 3.5 watt. X and Y axis will look at closer later. 12 volts 3 amp power supply, USB cable, protective glasses and accessories where you can find the screws and nuts to assemble the engraver, K, some cable ties, steel angles if you want to attach the engraver, brush and a few testing pieces. Design of that machine is pretty much the same as the older NJ laser engraver. It's really simple and it works. Here on X-axis we got aluminium profile with acrylic mounting plate and the motor on one side. On other side is just a pulley and of course carriage with three wheels for the laser motor, connected with GT2 belt. Carriage runs smooth and accurate too, there are no dead mode to feel. If we follow the manual we must firstly install the laser model to its carriage. Manual say that we need to use two plastic washer, but in my case there was already a treated spacer on the laser, so the mounting was even easier. But that spacer got really thin wall, so laser is not that stable. But when the laser is mounted it worked just ok, I didn't see the problem here. And also can be fixed easily with the longer screws and a few washer. And here we got pre-assembled Y-axis. Base is a wider aluminium rail with two acrylic leg on ends. On the back leg is attached main board with two buttons, USB and power supply sockets. Acrylic carriage got four wheels because force there is a bit bigger, it must hold entire X-axis. There is also stepper motor and the PCB with the X limit switch and the connector to plug the laser. Under the carriage is Y limit switch. When I try to attach X axis I notice that the belt on Y axis isn't tight enough, so I got a lot of that move here. Tightening the belt is simple and it's done with a single screw. Now just attach the X axis to Y axis and don't forget to plug the laser connector firstly. When the axis is on its place, add washer and every screw and tie the bolts. Then secure laser cable with the zip ties. Plug the X stepper motor and that's it. Few minutes after unpackage the laser is ready to use. Now prepare the PC and install software. As I say manual is good, so all we need to do is follow the manual step by step and everything will work fine. Firstly I go to website and download the entire drivers and custom buttons folders. Now open the driver folder. There are 4 drivers for 32 and 64 bit Windows 6P to Windows 10, but no iOS driver here. When we find try right driver for our system extract them and install. Driver is now successfully installed. Now we need software to run the machine. Orter doesn't offer its own software, but using free software Laser GRBL. There are no links to get software into manual, but with Google it can be easily found. I just search for Laser GRBL software, download and install them. Now plug the power supply to a laser. There are two buttons from the behind. To turn on the machine, push and hold the big button for a second, and push and hold 3 seconds for turn it off. Small button is for reset the machine, but when we push it, machine instantly turned off, so we need to turn on with big button again. When we turn on the machine, it instantly go to zero position, until it activate X and Y limit switch. Twice. Now turn off the machine and plug the USB cable, then turn it on again and PC will recognize new hardware. Into GRBL select proper COM port and connect. Now we can manually control the laser, but some buttons are missing here. To add custom buttons, right click and choose import custom buttons. Then select the folder you downloaded before and import all buttons for easier work. Now we got new buttons to control the laser, but firstly I put a piece of wood under the machine to protect the table, in case of trouble. 
Now we got everything prepared to start engraving core cutting, but before we start just one more warning. That kind of diode laser are extremely dangerous for our eyes, so please use protective glasses every time you work with a laser. Let's try to engrave something now on that testing piece of wood. When we are connected with GRBL, click File, Open File, choose some picture, click Open and new window will appear. In that window we can set some parameters, like engraving settings where we choose best brightness and contrast for your photo. On the right side we can always see the changes and also can switch to see the original file. Then we got here conversion tool. Manual say that we need to set second option, but we got here also very useful vectorize and center line function. Then we got here some different dithering option, but I didn't see some difference here. Direction is always set to horizontal, because this design of a laser only on x-axis allowed fast moves. If we set vertical, the y-axis run fast with lot of weight on it, so we can expect a lot of fail, especially on the end of x-axis. And the last setting in this window is quality of engraving. We can set from 1 to 20 lines per millimeter. This function got lot of effect to engraving time. If we set 20 lines per millimeter, it will engrave once more time than with 10 lines per millimeter. And yeah, there are a few more buttons for rotate, flip, mirror, crop the image and so on. When we set up everything, click next and you window will appear. Here we set laser stuff. First is speed. Here we set the speed of a laser when engraved. In 20 spots laser go with max speed more than 3000 mm per minute anyway. Second tap is laser option. M3 function is for cutting, so laser only work with full power. And M4 function is for engraving, so the laser can work grayscale. Laser off, leave to M5. Here we got also size of engraved picture and offset. When everything is set up, click create and that's it. We got prepared file to engrave. Now put engraved material under the laser and click that button. So laser turn on with low power. Now adjust the focus by turning the laser lens to get smallest possible dot. Now click that button so the laser show us the engraving area. If we engrave small pieces it's easiest to move working pieces on right position. Otherwise we can change the position with the buttons or just move the laser manually to wanted position. But when we got the right position don't forget to click this button so we give new zero position to the laser. Otherwise it will return to previous position and start engraving. Now all we need to do is click play button and the laser start doing their job. Here in the software we can see some information like g-code sending to machine, project time, actually engraving time, position of a laser, speed and power of a laser and so on. In that case I set speed to 2000 mm per minute and laser power to 500 so engraving is quite fast for that 25 mm tall tree it needs just a minute. Now let's take a look what we need to do if we want to change some settings and then see the different result later. I just engraved the tree, but I want the result darker, so I need to increase the laser power or lower down the engraving speed. To do that, click file and then reload last file. Now we got same window as before, and if we didn't close the software there are all the settings stay the same as we used before. I just want to change the laser power, so just click next to get laser settings and then just change these settings and click next. I don't talk too much about the software and settings, because every material responds different, so best way to get right settings is lot of playing. But let's take a look how to cut. I got here the XF file of my logo, but it can't be imported into that software. Maybe it worked with GRBL, but I didn't try, because this is the manufacturer specified program. So all you can do here is import different type of photo, no the XF or NC files here. So I import GPG file of my logo and try vectorize function into software. But as you can see the photo is too colorful to get out nice lines. On the back and white photos it worked great. This is the best result I can get. There are some details are missing and also the letters isn't that good. But anyway, the laser followed the lines without too much dead moves. Now I want to try cutting different materials. But how if I can't import DXF or NC file? Dimension is not important in that case, so I just draw a square into Windows Paint and save it as GPG file and open into laser GRBL. If I choose vectorized function it will make double square, so I choose centerline, but forget about accurate dimension in that way. 
for cutting, I set laser on to M3, laser power and border speed change depend on the material I want to cut. I try to cut and engrave a few different material. Let's check the result of cutting firstly. Color of material got huge effect to cutting. You can see here that the basic white paper can be cut with 700mm per minute, but with 500 it cut nicely. And don't forget to set a focus for each material of different height. 0.3mm thick cardboard, no problem. 0.4mm heavy paper, no problem. 2mm cardboard, no problem. 1mm balsa can be cut also at bigger speed, up to 700mm per minute. Balsa 2 and 3mm, no problem. Balsa 4mm, almost. It cut on two sides, first go, but for other two sides need second go. 1.6mm testing piece soft plywood, cut nicely in 2 to 3 go. 1mm avio plywood was just too tough to cut, but on 2mm spruce wood got amazing result. 10mm balsa, try to cut about 5 times and cut about 8mm deep. Different type of leather, it can cut in single or dual go, but there stay some fibers. 2mm fleece, cut like butter, also bright colors. And of course, sponge different thickness, cut like butter. PAT plastic, leave no traces. 3D printed PLA plastic, just leave some melted traces on the surface. Inox, no traces. Red plexiglass, just leave slightly traces. PCB cooper board, leave no traces. And the aluminium sheet, no traces. With proper settings it has sticker really nice. It don't burn the edge and cut out just the sticker layer. That's it about cutting. Honestly, I expect more cutting capacity for 15 watt laser. And it's strange that it cut in two sides and not on other two. Well, that's because of bad focus. I don't know, is that just in my case, but that laser just can't be focused into perfect dot. There are always celib shape of dots, so power isn't concentrated into a single spot. Just out of curious, I disassembled the laser to see how it works and if there can be set something else than focus. On the top of laser is cover, then the laser driver board and under it is a huge fan, which run all the time with full power when the laser is on, even if the laser cold as beer. That laser got 3 hours, so it doesn't get temperature feedback, but I didn't notice that the laser will heat also after a few hours of use. I didn't know that 7 watt driver can drive 15 watt laser. Now we got here a huge aluminium heat sink. Lens got rubber on trees to prevent dust coming in. An additional spring which holds it in position, so it won't unscrew by itself. With untightening that screw, the laser mode will come out. Laser housing is pretty solid piece of steel. I don't know, but steel isn't the best in heat transfer. When I open also that housing, I found a laser diet, which can be inserted on any position. I tried to play a bit and then assemble back together. Believe it or not, I got better result and also the power of cutting is better now, but it's still far from perfect dot. Let's check the engraving results now. First of all, I can say that this engraver is really fast. To engrave my logo size 100 by 100 mm need only about 50 minutes. I try to engrave same image on same wood with different laser power and speed, so I get best settings for best result on different material. I was thinking that more powerful laser is always better, because we can lower down the power and get same result as with weaker laser model, but after a few engraving tests I figured out that it's not true. That laser is designed for cutting, that's clear, so if looking for engraving laser, take 3.5 or 7 watt version. 15 watt version is just too powerful and got trouble to engrave grayscale. We can see here that also with different settings get almost same result on grayscale. Here we can see that if we go with power settings below 300, laser will engrave in invisible mode. If we set power to 317 it start leaving traces, but 400 is some kind of minimum power settings. If we increase power to get darker engrave, laser start burning wood instead of just burning the surface, and we get deeper engrave, especially on soft wood. To understand better what I'm talking about, I got here engraved same image. Left one is engraved with 3.5 watt NAJ laser, and right one is engraved with Ortur 15 watt laser. From far we can see much more details on the left one, it's also more dark and got better grayscale, and also the wood fibers almost didn't seen. If you look closer, we can see that on the left one engraved 3.5 laser, image is burned just on the surface of wood, but if we look on the right one engraved with 15 watt laser, we can see a lot of burnt material, so we got some serious holes here.
those two images in great with same speed and power settings. I just change a bit brightness and contrast. Here I try different power, speed, brightness and contrast settings. It's pretty hard to get right settings for good grayscale result. Also on different material like acrylic a better result with 3.5 watt. Those two images in great with sales settings, but the top one is with M3 laser settings which is for cutting and lower one is in great with M4 laser settings. There is some difference, but don't know which one is better. Another test with same settings. Left one is in great with one bit dithering and right one is with line to line tracing. And here I try different resolution of engraving. First one got only 5 lines per millimeter and it was engraved in only 51 seconds. Last one is in great in highest resolution, 20 lines per millimeter. It need 3.5 minutes to engrave and it's not much better than third one engraved at 15 lines per millimeter. I got here older laser and AJ 3.5 watt. Design of the machine is pretty much the same, so let's make some comparison. It's got same working area, so also dimension of machine is the same. There are just tiny hardware changes, like belt tightening pulley, wheels is a bit different, and overall NAJ look and feel a bit better. One big difference is that NAJ got Y limit switch direct on board and Orter got it on carriage. So the zero point is left front, which is more logical than NAJ which got zero position left back and also starting ring from top to bottom. NAJ is much more stable, but that's just because of the laser model weight. But the biggest difference between those two lasers is into brain. Orter board work with 32-bit STM chip, NAJ run on 8-bit, but NAJ got dual microcontroller, one for GRBL software and another for NAJ software. Order got two switch for turn on, off and reset the machine. Neji got only one button for control the machine into offline mode. Now I'll try to engrave same image to see the difference. Boot PC is into Windows. From starting the software to starting engraving on Neji I need 1 minute and 14 seconds. And almost double time with GRBL. Neji software is really awesome. If you want to change some settings, we can easily do that while engraving. Into GRBL we need to reload image and change the settings. When it starts engraving, we can't change settings anymore. NAJ also offers CNC cutting from DXF or NC files, which is really important, some kind of amazing function if you use it for cutting. And NAJ also offers quick text engraving, fast transferring image from phone, offline engraving and much more. We can see here that Orter engraved from button to top and AJ from top to bottom. Also the power of each laser is clearly seen. And here we can see how faster the Orter machine is. For same image, AJ used 15 minutes and Orter just 3 minutes. That's huge difference, but also if the Orter is much faster it worked much smoother and got less vibrations. I put an empty cup on end of X axis to see the difference. Here I have 50 by 100 mm photo of our national treasure, Bled Iceland. Order engrave it in just 24 minutes, while NAJ need about 90 minutes. But on NAJ1 we can find much more details. But if we look closer we can see that some lines are missing on NAJ1. I think that's it for today. My opinion is that the Order is better machine, 32 bit board make huge difference. Maybe I got a bit bad luck with the laser model, but anyway we are quite limited to the software. As I say, I think with using basic GRBL we can cut the XF files, but not into laser GRBL. As we see also preparing to engrave is much faster by NAJ software. I got lot of question about metal engraving. The answer is no. None of that cheap laser can engrave into ferrous and non-ferrous material like aluminium, copper, brass and so on. For that kind of job you'll need more expensive fiber laser. And also if the laser is too powerful for grayscale engraving, we can make some awesome black and white deep engrave. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.